All right, everybody, this is Ross. In uh, today's video, we're not feeling all that great, guys. Um, a couple days ago, I was a bit run down. I didn't get enough sleep, and then I ended up getting a cold, a fever, and uh, I'm through all that now, thankfully, and now we just kind of have a big sinus issue in my head and my sinuses, and everything's just stuffed up. So you you guys are just going to have to bear with me in this video. But I did want to make it even though I am sick because my fig season's fast approaching, guys. Um, I actually went outside even though I'm not feeling all that great and it is a bit nasty out there. Um, I did decide to go outside and turn the heater on in the greenhouse. And partly because obviously it's going to be cold tonight. We're going to get down to 14. Um but also because I think because it's been so mild here and what the forecast is telling me, just overall my thoughts um, on the next month or so, I think it's going to be quite mild. And I think I can probably get away with starting the figs a bit earlier than I normally would. So normally I start them like March 1st is around the right date that I turn the heater on. And then most things in the greenhouse end up waking up about 15 to 30 days later, so around March 15th or April 1st. And uh, that gives us a great head start to the season. They kind of hang out in there. So about as long as I can keep them in there, about till June is about the, the kind of the last cutoff date there, June 1st. So um, what I've decided is just to, again, like I said, start this thing, this whole process a bit earlier. I'm gonna do a video on all the details revolving around that because I think it's a lot more intricate. There's more details than what I just told you guys, but um, that's the plan. And it kind of got me thinking about the fig season and really what I'm looking forward to, as I mentioned. Um, what varieties do I look forward to the most this year? Well, obviously there's the keeper list that we've talked about and there's my favorites you know this is my keeper list right here this is in my spreadsheet in the description of any video i've ever put out it's a great resource for you guys if uh i know a lot of you guys use this thing um especially for figs uh so i i've done videos now on my top five favorite figs my top 10 in 2019 and also we did one on our keeper list but this is kind of like a video about what I'm looking forward to obviously I want to taste all the figs again that I love so dearly right if they're in this keeper list you know they're they're my favorites so um, certainly I'm looking forward to trying all these again uh, actually I've never tried white Madeira number one so we have to put this back down here in this column so this column here is like a, a column that needs more testing before I can definitively give it the thumbs up. Um, you know, I can maybe even make an argument that some of these maybe shouldn't be in here. I haven't had too many Delson Wami Gran um, to this date. Um, what else? I haven't had many... I haven't had many perfectly ripe white Triana as much as I love it. Um, I still would like more time with a lot of these, but um, so far they've been really impressive and I just I have to put them in this category. But this category right here is almost sort of a bit speculative. Um, I think there's a number of varieties out there that I've acquired that have a really high potential to definitely become one of my favorites, become one of my keepers. Um, there's a long list of varieties you know if I'm growing it it's for a reason but I think I'm looking forward to this category this column right here probably the most um, for whatever reason I think I'm just a bit more excited about them and I want to tell you guys why I'm, I'm more excited about these than uh, most others and these are figs that I've I've already been growing now for a year or more um, so it's not like it's out of the realm of possibility that they're going to fruit for me. I think it's very possible that all of these could potentially fruit for me this year. And obviously that's the goal is to get everything to fruit for me. Um, but I didn't want to make a video about the varieties I had acquired in the form of cuttings 
because they may not fruit for me. They probably won't fruit for me. They're from cutting, right? Plus, they're just very young. So I figured this is just a video for like some of my older varieties or varieties that are not, you know, exactly one day old. Um, I've had them for quite some time and just would like more experience, more time with them. You know, I've had quite a bit of Galicia Negra at this point, so maybe I could bump it over to here. But the idea with a lot of these is that I really would like to experience them more in higher quantity. So we could start off by saying like white Madeira, you know, this is a variety that's just across the board. Everybody loves it and raves about it. Um, as close as it is to a green Aishia or an Adriatic type, um, I do think that there's a number of uh, experienced fig growers that are that I trust and are credible uh, that are telling me that it's a good one. So I'm personally quite excited for it, and it's it's not exactly like a green Aishia type. So that's a big bonus right there in itself. Uh, we also have figs like like Vertolino here, and there's a few others like um, San Baggio. And these are the figs that Paulo really recommends. Um, you can go to his Facebook page. It's the uh, Pomona page right here. I don't know how to pronounce the rest of this, but he posts all kinds of stuff there. And one of the posts that he made in 2017 was about the earliest varieties that he grows. These are the first ones, so August 1st, right? That's the beginning sort of of his season. And you know that if Pastillier is ripening, that's one of the earliest figs that exists. So what are the others here that he recommends? Well, this is um, Ungiarolo. And we've got Nerucciolo de Alba, which is probably the best fig I can grow here. We have uh, San Baggio, Vertolino, Paradiso, which actually I consider already in my keeper list. Um, and then also the Pastillier is the last one, which is also in my keeper list. So a lot of these already have translated over. A lot of the, Fen the French varieties and Italian varieties that are quite popular, they do really well over here, um, especially if they're a bit old. They seem well adapted. Um, they do really do seem to translate over well to this climate more so than other places like I would argue that I have more successful varieties from France and Italy than anywhere else um, and it's not because I have some weird affinity with those cultures it's just that they again they seem to translate well over to uh, this location um, so Vertolino is definitely one of them, and so is Ungiarolo, San Baggio. We have all of these. We've had them for, again, over a year now. Um, at least I was rooting some of these last year. Another one that's really highly touted Italian variety is the Brianzolo Rosso. This is a just a stupidly early fig, probably as early as Pastelliere or even earlier it's got a unique flavor profile uh, really highly touted by not just people in Europe but also people have it in the US that like it I have a friend in New York City that loves it um, he also really loves Vertolino in New York City um, you know I have friends in Connecticut that are growing Ungirolo and Vertolino and um, people in Holland really like San Baggio uh, Pissoluto is another one that's actually another Italian fig that's really rain resistant seems to be more on the mid-season side uh, but also very tasty and this one's growing in in Florida and Louisiana and North Carolina um, and also in Holland so it does really well in these humid shorter season places um, you know so a lot of these again like I said a lot of these Italian figs do really well here Another Italian fig actually that does well here, or at least I should show you another post of some Italian varieties that do well here. Here's again more proof. I think this photo was taken I think in 2018 or 2019 where Paolo uh, in Italy, by the way, Paolo's you know, the source, the collector in Italy 
um, for these different varieties. He really knows what he's doing and talking about. And Thierry is probably the best source of information in France. Um, so between the two of them, they're very credible. And you can see here on this rack or whatever you want to call it, he's got, again, at the beginning of a season, things like Angirolo, Paradiso, San Baggio, Ruccio de Elba, Ferlino, you know, Fico Secco. This is just the same thing as uh, Fico Moro de Caneva or Figo Moro de Caneva. Um, it has many names for it. And um, that's another really great fig um, that does really early. It's really early and it's also really tasty. I love to find Bosniaco and Turka here at some point. Um, not sure if I'm going to be able to, but yeah um whatever these guys are kind of telling me is is really great information like we already know that Thierry loves Campanieri and I've discovered for sure it does really well here he also loves more de Caneva and then another one that he is fond of is the Col Noir and Conde Vampira one um so these are some figs that I I've sort of acquired that I, I really am looking forward to. Conde, I think, is probably Thierry's favorite. Um, if we find a photo of Conde here, at least it was his favorite. And um, he really raves about it. It dries really well. Um, very good taste quality. I mean, it's just an absolute winner for sure. I'm really looking forward to it here. Look at that. That just looks so good. You can see there's very little cracking. Um, and these figs that dry on the tree is really what makes it for me. Um, you know, things like Neruccio de Elba and Verdino del Nord, we've talked about in the past. They really are just like some of the best figs that you can grow here by far uh, because of those drying capabilities. It's a big part of it. And I have just have to say that Conde, for that reason, has got to be one of the best just for that reason alone um let's see what else do we got here so col noir this i think is the same thing as sucret and i'm very anxious to find out if it is indeed the same thing right um sucret's already one of my favorite figs it just has such a superior drying capability um you know lampiro one this is a fig that Again, Thierry really likes that. Reminds me a lot of um, a, sort of like a Col de Dom, if you can think about it like that. It's more on the later side, but again, it dries well, has good rain resistance, and that's really important for a variety that is so late. Um, he says it's also resistant to the cold, which is quite interesting. So I'm like really excited to see what this one does, you know. Um, Quite an interesting variety for sure. Um, let's see what else we got. We got Nefiach, which is a really a pretty common at this point French fig that I think Bode was really the first one to, to really highlight this particular variety in France. It dries well in the tree, got great taste qualities. It's more of a smaller fig fragrant you know uh, i think this is uh, actually it comes from professor rivals collection so who knows if bode or, or rivals was the first one to make that fig sort of uh popular um there's also the la bourgeoisie and la bourgeoisie is one that bode really loves talking about how it's pretty similar to a cold de dame but it's earlier um by about two or two weeks i think he said so that's really interesting in itself right there i'm always looking for something to beat out one of these cold and om figs that i love so dearly you know um who knows what could happen with some of these um let's see what else we also have pew fine from an uh from thierry as well and this one translates to fine skin. And maybe I should not translate this. I'll be able to find it. So there's Pew Fine again from Professor Professor Rivals collection. I mean that just looks beautiful, extremely tasty. I mean, come on. Look at that. 
Um, maybe not as much information out there on it as I'd like. I could always ask Thierry, but you know, um, I obviously have to look forward to that one. Um, you know, things like Calderona and Colonel Littmans and Ponte Tresa, as an example, Sanguinato, Sofeno Preto. You know, these are figs that sort of uh, maybe not maybe not Sofeno Preto, but these other ones are really getting lots of attention in the United States because they're so good. White Madeira we talked about. So a lot of these growers are that are credible are coming out of uh, out of the woodwork and telling us like, hey, you know, these are really tasty. And you have to think, well, if all these people are saying it, it must be true, right? I don't want to. Um, you know, I think there's a lot of people out there who, for whatever reason, don't believe collectors enough. Don't put enough faith into what people say. When, you know, you don't have to be doing this all yourself. You don't have to be the guinea pig. Um, take people's word for it. I mean, there's a lot of people out there who know what they're doing. As long as you you know that who those people are, um, you know, you certainly can take their advice and run with it. I mean, it's not like this is, um, we're not alone in this, guys. So I definitely think that Calderona, although I've never tasted it, and Colonel Littmans have never tasted it, same thing with White Madeira, and I've had a Ponte Tresa, but just didn't seem like it was up to the quality that people were telling me. You have to take their word for it and say, all right, well, this has got to be really good. Same thing with Negra de Agde. My friend Jamie and uh, Danny both love this fig. It's similar. It's really thick, like a cold adam, but a mid-season variety. So you have to kind of just say, all right, well, you know, they're really loving it. Why wouldn't I? Um, you know, my friend Raphael and um, Matt, they both love the Demos Unknown. Um, I would venture to guess that it's probably going to do really well, of course, here, if it does well for them. Um you know what else are we looking at here? Fico Love. This is one that I have a personal hunch about, and because there's a lot of mixed reviews out there on it, um, it has some pretty good drying capabilities, which is really good and what I look for. But uh, I think controlling the water is really the key to this variety. Uh, whether it's maybe too much, maybe I need to overwater it a bit, or even just slightly underwater it. Whatever that amount of water is, is really important, I think, for this variety. If you get that right, I have a feeling it's going to be up there with some of the best, but maybe not the best ever, the best in my collection, but um, definitely one that I'm looking forward to a ton, right? Um, Galicia Negra, I'm a big fan of this fig already. It's just that um, I want to see, I want more of them. You know, I want to see a couple more things from it before I can say, all right, definitively, you're in this little category here of my keepers. In fact, I probably could just put it in here right now. You know, I really should, in, in all honesty, uh, because as, as it stands right now, it is my favorite black mission type. And that to me is enough out of all the black mission types I grow. That should be enough. Should it not? I mean, I would like to find a variety called Porquensa Negra from Ponds. Um, I just can't. I can't really find it. Um, it doesn't seem like anybody has it in the United States. And I guess it translates to why. <laughs> but this is a very early fig. And it's very similar to a Black Mission. Um, well, actually, Pond says it's insipid. <laughs> Is this really the one that I'm looking for? I don't, re I don't remember here. Um, I think this is it, but if I get out my book, maybe he's changed his opinion on this. The point is, is that, um, you know, out of all the black missions, it seems like Alicia Negra is the best. And for that, you just gotta have to give it some props and put it in that next category. Um, you know, what else we got here? Recover is another one that Thierry is really liking um, because it's so thick. It really does make a whole lot of sense. Here's the Recover and it's not really 
uh, the real Recover is what he told me is that because the real one's supposed to be a uh, Smyrna, I think. So he found one from the Poor Corolla's Conservatory, and he was telling me that um, he doesn't really know what it is because, again, it's it's common and it's fruiting for him. So he's kind of confused on what it really is. I have a feeling that it's really similar to Borges Soak Grease or Socorro Black and Violet Sapor. I have a feeling all those are quite similar to each other. But at the end of the day, if it is or it isn't, I still really would like to try it. Um, Sanguinato, this is one that I I haven't really gotten a chance to try because it keeps dropping for me and there's a lot of debate as to whether it's a Smyrna. And I thought it was a Smyrna. And a lot of the figs from Andreas seem to be Smyrnas. But this one I was willing to take a chance with and Gary over in California, in Northern California, who doesn't have the wasp, uh, says it fruited for him. So I'm excited to try it and see if I can get it to fruit here. But um, so far that dream is getting its getting uh, more worrisome as time goes on. But uh, Sefeño Preto is a similar story here is that it keeps dropping for me. Actually, I don't even think this Sefeño Preto fruited at all this year. And it's getting up there in age now. So it'll be in its third year. I would expect it to fruit. I would expect it to do something. And uh, the last fig here I want to talk about, I think, is the Sultane. And Sultane is just one of them figs that um, I had years ago. And it died, and I was very upset about it. And I tried to replace it, and some friends helped me out. And I finally got one. And um, it was one of my favorites for sure, and I just miss it. So... It'll be good to have it back and then to definitively say if I can put it in the, my keeper list. Um, my in-ground tree seems to be doing quite well, so hopefully it'll fruit and uh, we'll be in business here, guys. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. You got something out of this. You know, what are some of the varieties that you guys are looking forward to? Even if it's something pretty common like LSU Purple or something or Hardy Chicago, let me know what you guys are interested in trying. If you want to know any of my thoughts on particular varieties, put them down below. Um, I'll try to reply back. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching this one, guys. Check us out on Fig Boss, Facebook, and Instagram. We'll see everybody soon, all right? Take care, guys.